So I was cleaning out the garage and came across this um, old paintball gun and uh, well I'm going to throw it in the trash, it's not worth anything and I thought before I did that I would at least um, kind of archive it. Um, I bought this gun, it was a Sheridan rifle, uh, bolt action originally. Um, I think it was, 19, yeah, it was 1986, I was 16 years old and uh, they called it War Games back then. Um, yeah, they used the word paintball too, but you know there were some, some small magazines and there was a few fields and it was just very, very early in the sport back then. And uh, <clears throat> most people had the pistols, the Nell Spot pistols and the Sheridan pistols, uh, the 68 caliber ball, which is still, um, I think, the, the most popular uh, size uh, ball today, but um, they were uh, single shot um, or uh, single shot at time bolt action and uh, I wanted the rifle because it uh, had with a longer barrel, you know, uh, would provide more accuracy. But uh, it was um, bolt action, single CO2, I think you got like 30 shots out of a CO2, something like that. And uh, the popular modification at the time was to convert it to pump action, so you didn't have to, you know, use a bolt. You could just reach up with your, you know, left hand and keep it on the uh, on the pump there and, and and pump it. And I actually had that modification done. I think it was a place called Paintball Express uh, in Anaheim back at the time and back then. And uh, originally, what they do is they cut the. I'm gonna point with my foot here. They cut the the stock here, and then they use the front part of the stock as the pump. So. Originally, there was another wood piece here, which was the pump. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we added something called a speed loader. I don't think this is the original one put on there. I think it was metal. The first one I had on there was metal. And then you add uh, what they called constant air, uh, which is uh, this 12-ounce uh, uh, CO2 canister. And you could, you know, get, I don't remember, hundreds of shots out of, the, out of a canister like that, rather than those little CO2 cartridges. Um, and uh, this, this gun has evolved, I mean, because what happened was I, I went to work for a place, it was originally called Loy's, Loy's Paintball or something like that, and <clears throat> um, went to work for these guys, and they uh, sold paintball, paintball gear, guns, you know, masks and all that stuff, and, and, and paintballs. And uh, I, I worked there for a couple years, I think it was, um, and I ended up becoming the gunsmith there. And so, you know, I was tricking out all these other people's guns. Uh, they'd pay us to, you know, convert them to, to pump action or, you know, uh, increase the velocity, add constant air. Uh, we sold these uh, aluminum brackets here and put those on and, you know, just do different modifications. And so, of course, I modified my own gun many times. You know, this is not what it first looked like, and it wasn't even a it wasn't a black stock. That's a rubberized coating on the stock there, because uh, the paintball uh, juice would eat away all the varnish. Uh, that was originally a wood grain, but uh, I ended up covering it in the, in that rubber dip, um, and then you know replaced all the hardware and everything. And and I had a you know adjustable <coughs> screw back here, set screw for adjusting the velocity. Uh, just uh, would you know keep a little Allen wrench with me, and I could you know and change the spring tension, which changed how much CO2 was released with each shot. Here's your safety and fire. Uh, the bolt is actually frozen on this right now. You, you, you can't open the pump, and the thing weighs a ton. I mean, this I've got you know more modern gun, a, a Spider, and this thing is just is crazy. And it's not even it's not even semi-automatic. You have to pump you know for each shot. And, uh, and this was light, I mean, compared to, you know, the original modifications. The bracket I had was real heavy. The, the speed loader originally was, was metal. Uh, you know, it was just crazy how much it weighed. And, you know, this is kind of the, the more reduced, lighter uh, version of this gun. And then, you know, eventually I had, you know, these hoppers, which are made out of PVC. I had a bigger one. I think this is the smaller one. It's like 200 rounds or maybe less. It's pretty small. But I used to have a bigger one, and that that thing filled up with 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 uh, with paint. Uh, you know, this thing is a monster. You know, your arms would be sore after you know one game. It was crazy. You know, and you're out there pumping and pumping. You know, for each shot, and um, you know they you know had plenty of velocity. It'd just shoot you know three hundred and thirty, 
feet per second or something, you know, you hit somebody who leaves a really nice welt. Uh, but you get good distance and everything, but you just, you're carrying this monster around the field. Anyway, um, originally got into the paintball with my friend Dave, my brother, Mike, uh, my dad even played a few games back then when we we rent the uh, the field pistols. And somehow I ended up with my friend Dave's gun, so this is going to go in the trash too. I thought I'd go ahead and video his here too. His also was a uh, a rifle. I think he originally had an L spot, and he ended up uh, destroying that. And uh, he cut this one down, cut the the butt off, and you know same pump modifications. I think the bolt's frozen on this one too. Yeah, it's junk. And this is the originally where the CO2 cartridge would go up here in the front. Um, I can actually get that out. And I don't think we ever had any kind of point sights or scopes or anything. These, they're not really accurate enough for that. You just kind of watch where your ball's going and then, you know, adjust for distance. And they'd still hook and spin and you'd break balls all the time. You know, these things are totally gooped up with, with paint. Anyway, so that's where the CO2, uh, the little CO2 cartridge would go in there when you want, when you're doing, you know, the stock configuration, you know, before you added a canister. So here was his canister. He had all his stuff all camoed out. So he had a canister and a, you know, and a speed loader. <laughs> and then this thing. And that, that company, it ended up being called, be called uh, it was called Aerostar. Aerostar International or something like that, and you know they actually had their own line of guns. And the guy working for his name was Gale. I, I lost contact with him a long time ago, um, but he used to sell just a ton of paint. You know, we used to ship all around the country, and you know I, I don't know what the going price is, but I remember back then it was like six cents a ball it was like a really good price. You bought it by a case of like fifteen hundred or three three thousand rounds. <clears throat> this is a face mask. This you know went on the bottom of some goggles. And back then, most people didn't have these. You know, now it's, it's required equipment when you play on a field. And uh, I played a couple years ago um, with my brother-in-law and my nephews, and it was just a totally different experience. We played on the same field. We played it in, in Corona at Sat Kong Village, and, uh, or Riverside. I forget where, what city that's in. But, uh, I mean, it was just hundreds of people. And everybody was just totally decked out with all this, you know, all this protective gear. The guns, of course, are like fully auto and, you know, they're, they don't weigh anything. You know, you can sit there and hold it with one arm and just, you know. And, uh, you know, nobody's afraid of getting hit because they're all wearing all this gear and everything. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt. You know, you get hit with a, some motorcycle padding or full face mask or whatever. You know, there's no downside really to getting hit with a paintball then you're out and then a lot of times people would wipe it off if nobody would see and they'd cheat and that seemed uh, really prevalent and it wasn't back in the day when we played that was like a major major no-no here's a, a barrel cleaner swab it's so going to be stained with paint and i'm sure this is terribly boring to anybody that didn't play paintball back in the day but you know this stuff these uh these guns um are 20, 25 years old, and, you know, the technology is, is improved incredibly. You know, originally I think these were designed for marking trees to be cut down or something. You know, I don't think they were originally designed for shooting people. Um, and then, you know, we just, you know, modified them to suit, and then the company, you know, Sheridan back in the day, you know, they, they came out with a pump-action gun, and then they, you know, came out with different guns altogether. Uh, which, you know, shot faster and better and were more accurate and a lot of other companies uh, came into to being and, you know, it's a whole industry now. You see paintball stores all over the place, you know, selling guns and paint and, and everything. But uh, I was there towards the beginning and uh, it uh, was one of my first uh, real jobs was being a, a, an airsmith is what they called us. And... Um, Enjoyed it a lot. Worked on these uh, these guns quite a bit, and that's it. I'm throwing them away. Chapter's over.